Well, good evening, folks, and welcome back to the farm. We're in the workshop here this evening because it gets dark at 7 o'clock. <laughs> uh, so we're going to work on a little project, a little how-to video today. We've got ourselves an IBC tote. If you recall from the other day, we're actually going to fill this thing up with a molasses-based supplement for our sheep. But in the process of filling it, well, once we got it all the way full, I found there was a little spot right here where there was some corrosion and it actually rubbed against the plastic liner and we had a hole. Well, can't work with that. So I just picked up another tote, got it filled up. We're Bob's your uncle, we got our sheep supplement. But we also have this tote, it's got a big hole in it. What do we do with that? Well, if I get a new liner for this, apparently, that, apparently I can get a new liner for this for pretty doggone cheap. But we know there's a spot on the cage where it's gonna rub through and so it's not really very dependable. So we're gonna repurpose this one. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna turn this thing into a hay bale feeder for the sheep. Over the years, we've tried a number of different things. Now typically we're using large round bales, but as you probably remember, we did secure a number of small square bales. And if we're gonna feed those, I would prefer them to be in some kind of means of containment rather than just be a complete free-for-all because sheep will trample and step and poop on stuff and they do waste a lot of hay so keeping it in a feeder should reduce a lot of that waste now over the over the time that we've had sheep we've tried a couple of different things as i said and one thing we've noticed is that sheep are really good at getting their head in spaces that they shouldn't be they're really good at getting their legs in spaces they shouldn't be and we had one sheep that was renowned for getting her head in a spot like just like that. To get in there and then couldn't pull her ears back, she'd be stuck there. And every day, maybe even a couple times a day, I'd have to go out there and pull her out of the feeder. So what we're going to try to do today is we're going to cut this thing up a little bit. We're going to be pretty merciless as we do it. I've got my, uh, my cordless impact here and I've got my cordless recip saw. And we are gonna butcher this thing and in, the, in the hopes that we can make a reasonable square bale feeder that nobody will get stuck in, nobody's leg will get trapped in there, and hopefully they don't waste any hay. So quick objective, what are we gonna do? We gotta remove these top two bars off of here, then we're gonna yank the liner out, and then we're gonna make some notches down the side. And we're going to notch along the bottom and we're going to fold these side walls in together and V them together so that they can hold a square bale in the center and then the sheep will be able to come up and get, grab a nibble. These front and back walls are going to stay in place just exactly as they are. So I've got these two top bars unscrewed. I'm not sure what kind of uh, laws of physics somebody had to defy to get these things connected, but there is these two little plastic loops here that I'm just gonna I'm just gonna cut them off because we know the liner's screwed. There's nothing to save here, so I'm just gonna go nip, 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 nip. And these should just pull right off, and then the liner will just basically come right out. Well, that was actually super easy. So the bladder is out of the cage itself. So we're ready to work on this one. The thing about this is, is it, is it completely gone to waste or is it not? I mean, there's still some pretty heavy duty plastic there. And I know that we've got a hole right down here, but there's nothing saying I couldn't split this tank this way and still keep this half for any number of different projects, a water trough, a garden bed, you know, a liner for something. I've even seen, actually, I've even seen people cut holes in this stuff and put a, put a heat lamp in there and turn it into a little miniature chicken brooder. Lots of different options. So the next step, what I gotta do is I gotta cut the corners out of here to allow these sides to fold in. What I don't wanna cut is the top corner because the top, we need that structural integrity there, right? We gotta have that top ring in place. So we're gonna take number two, number three, Number four and number five out. I have seen some designs where they left this 
Second from last, rail in place. As I mentioned, I do have some concerns with, you know, the odd sheep getting hung up in here. And, you know, if they get a leg stuck in there or something like that, that's a perfect place. Well, <laughs> perfect's maybe a bad word, but it is, it, if I were going to break a leg as a sheep, that's probably where I'd want to do it. So I am going to make sure that this stuff gets nipped off right at the base here. And then we don't have any untoward accidents. So now that we've got, as you can see, our corners cut out, I'm going to take that saw now and I'm going to cut down right here. And that will allow this side wall, and I'll do the same on the other side, of course, to fold in and V together. Now, what am I going to use to hold these together? Hmm, I'm not really sure. I've seen a couple of different options. I've seen people use zip ties. I've seen people use haywire. I'm thinking I'm going to go with a stainless steel hose clamp. It seems a little bit more sturdy and a little bit more common sense to me. <laughs> Won't be doing that before a battery switch. I didn't realize just how much cutting a guy has to do. Boy, does that ever chew through the battery power. So just give her the old switcheroo and we'll continue on here. So, as you can see, I've got the sides out, I've got the bottom out and we're ready to actually fold that inwards. And then we'll reattach it together with three hose clamps. One on either side, one in the middle. So this thing's not super hard to bend together. Basically just put your foot in the middle, apply a little pressure forward. And you can see we've already got the beginnings of a pretty good V. You got a little bit more bend to put on this side. There we go. And we should be able to easily get our cable clamps or our hose clamps in there and get that stuff attached. Okay, so there you have it. An absolutely perfect V feeder for hay bales for sheep. Well, absolutely perfect. Not quite. You ever see something in a picture and you're like, I, that really doesn't make any sense to me why they did a thing that way. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I had seen a model of this design where the bottom rail went all the, or the second from bottom rail went all the way around. And I thought that's a great place to snap a sheep's leg off. So I cut it off. I didn't want to do that. Well, it was there for lateral stability. So now, now I got a slight change of plan. It's easy peasy. All I'm going to do is undo this uh, cable clamp or hose clamp right here, and I do the other one on the other end. And I've got a little piece like this that I cut off. I've got a couple of these, and I'll stick it in there, right in there. And then I'm going to use a uh, self-tapping screw to hold this in place on the existing frame, and it ain't going to go anywhere. All right, so now we're done. I just secured that, like I said, with the hose clamp and a sheet metal screw on both sides. And it is as sturdy as the day is long. Well, maybe that's a bad example too because the days aren't, aren't very long now. But no, it looks like we're all set. So this one here, I think we're gonna take this one right here and we're actually gonna put it in the pen in behind the shop. So pretty excited about that. And well, I'm not as excited as the sheep are gonna be, but we'll see how she goes. Well, on that note, I think it's time for me to go for a cup of tea and maybe a piece of rhubarb pie. So let you go for now. I hope you have a fantastic evening and we'll see you tomorrow.